Now on Spotlight, the full school board on board with a decision to sue the state. Building wellness and so much more. How a generous gift is helping students soar into their fit nest. Rolling out the red carpet for dads and other male role models. Why this brand of camaraderie is resonating across campuses. And a local fifth grader squares off against some real pros on national TV. Hi, I'm Claudia Shea. I'm Rick Blackwell. First on Spotlight, the school district of Palm Beach County filing suit against the state. Well, the district is challenging the constitutionality of House Bill 7069, which requires school districts to give charter schools a share of the money they raise from property taxes. Our immediate concern is that House Bill 7069 is unconstitutional. Under House Bill 7069, charter schools can now potentially use public taxpayer dollars to lease privately owned facilities. And that opens the door to charter schools to, to start borrowing against the taxpayer's money on a long-term basis. The, while the constitutionality of House Bill 7069 is sorted through in the courts, we did not want charter schools running out and issuing debt against this revenue stream. The school board discussed the suit at length before voting unanimously to move forward with legal action. We have a unique situation in Palm Beach County where the taxpayers have given us sales tax money. They expect us to use that sales tax money to catch up on all the things that haven't been fixed and then at the end of 10 years to be ready to move forward without asking them for more money. And my, my point is that if we get $230 million of our capital money to the charter schools, and I'm not suggesting that the charter schools don't need capital money, I'm suggesting that the state legislature should find other sources to give them the capital money rather than taking away from the taxpayer-funded schools that are already here and that we have an obligation to maintain. Administrators say House Bill 7069 would result in the school district losing about $230 million over 10 years from its capital budgets that fund everything from school construction and repairs to classroom technology and buses. In the wake of Hurricane Irma, Palm Beach County students and teachers will be making up three of the days missed during the storm. You'll recall school was closed for seven days while some of those schools were used as shelters. So the three makeup days will be Monday, October 16th, Friday, November 3rd, and Monday, January 8th. Please mark your calendars. In other news from the boardroom, board members recently took time out to recognize the efforts of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, Legoland, and others for a PBSO initiative called Breaking the Cycle of Gang Recruitment. The program at South Grade Elementary School in Lake Worth involves building with Legos and building strong relationships with students in the process. The board also acknowledging GL Homes for helping students at Eagles Landing Middle School soar to new levels of fitness. Trisha Shervin giving us a look now at what could be called the school's new fit nest. BOSU balls, stationary bikes, battle ropes, just a few items of brand new fitness equipment at Eagles Landing Middle School in Boca Raton, thanks to a $25,000 donation from GL Homes. A school is a sense of pride for any neighborhood, and we are such a fabric of the community in Palm Beach County, and we want to make sure that these kids have not only a full academic life, but also have the physical fitness component um, for PE class. And we wanted to make sure that these kids really get off on the right foot in terms of exercise and wellness. GL Homes worked with Principal Joe Pesia to design the training circuit and select equipment for boys and girls of any skill or fitness level. Parents and students, here's your chance to see the wide variety of options available to you at our district schools. This is such a great opportunity. The Showcase of Schools will be held on October 17th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Expo Center at the South Florida Fairgrounds. It really is such a great way to check out the district's hundreds of choice and career academies and also to speak directly to students who attend them. So don't miss this important and one-stop shopping free event. It's always great and it's fantastic the participation that we see at that event. Well, students often excel when they're involved in a program they love. And that is certainly the case in this next story in which lots of talent, determination, and an education at Dreyfus helped a remarkable student dance her way into the prestigious Juilliard School. <laughs>
Dreyfus is a very unique school because it offers academics and arts, which is a very special thing, especially in Palm Beach County to have. So I'm very fortunate to have had the opportunity to attend for four years. My dream is to be a dancer and I've been doing it my whole life and I love it a lot. And I think with Juilliard, I can definitely pursue that in the future and I'm very excited for it. It's a prestigious setting and it's probably one of the best dance programs there is in the world. And to have an opportunity to attend a school like that is very special. And I think it will take me to the next level in the professional world of dance. I don't think I would be where I am without Dreyfus. Well, Mia is such an inspiration. I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more from her in the future as she continues her training and her studies. Way to go, Mia. Yeah. Speaking of higher education, college application season is here, and applications are now being accepted for FAFSA, for federal student aid. To help navigate the form, the School District of Palm Beach County is once again offering FAFSA and football night to encourage students and parents to fill out their federal financial aid forms with the help of school counselors and other community partners. And whether your student is college bound or planning for a career, he or she may find answers and guidance at the district's annual college and career fair. It will be held at the South Florida Fairgrounds in Concourse Building 6 through 10 on October 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. Representatives from more than 150 colleges, universities, trade schools, and the armed forces will all be on hand with a variety of information and opportunities. The Palm Beach County School District celebrated Dad's Take Your Child to School Day. At Dwight D. Eisenhower Elementary School in Palm Beach Gardens, fathers and positive male role models walked students to school, ate breakfast in the school cafeteria, and enjoyed reading a book together. Thomas Rivera knows these moments. You probably got something fun though, right? Don't last forever. You try to hold on as long as you can. <laughs> I think um, the idea of them growing up as a parent is kind of a little scary, but it's, it's, it's good to enjoy the time now. Thomas excited about participating in Dad's Take Your Child to School Day at Dwight D. Eisenhower Elementary in Palm Beach Gardens. To be able to be involved with my kids, it's just a, it's, it's, it's an overwhelming experience for them, and I think they appreciated it. The staff at Eisenhower Elementary made this day one to remember. Not just for dads, but also grandpas, foster fathers, and other positive role models. All were treated to a free breakfast before school. The healthy choices brought out lots of smiles. This event so popular, Principal Debbie Battles turned Dads Take Your Child to School into a two-day event. Parents, thank you for joining us this morning. We're so proud to have such a great turnout. After sharing a meal, it was time to share a book. The celebration moved to the library, where everyone got to spend some quality time reading together. It's so important that dads read with their children, whether they're a role model reading the newspaper at home or reading with their children. But when the, when the kids see their dads reading, they know that it's important and they'll want to do that too. To encourage reading at home, students and parents could also take a book home. I guess you could say this incredible morning at Dwight D. Eisenhower Elementary, one for the books. A great morning at Dwight D. Eisenhower Elementary. And Finance Academy students from William T. Dwyer High School got a taste of how the Palm Beach County School District and public finance are intertwined. So cool, they simulated an important financial transaction at the exact moment that a real transaction was taking place. Trisha Shervin has more on that. Dwyer High School Finance Academy students spent time with banking professionals taking part in a conference call with a J.P. Morgan trading professional in New York City. It's all part of an annual tax anticipation note sale, or TAN sale as it's known. This sale allows the school district to borrow money until tax revenue becomes available. The students appreciated this real world experience. Today's uh, activity was just so completely great for us to have this experience here at the school district. Uh, even just been on the phone with all the trading desks and the experience all the people like the Morgan Stanley Company and Wells Fargo. It was just a great experience for us today. 
It just the real life connections and experiences that we can actually take on whatever we do in college. And I feel like we're very blessed that we got this opportunity to come here today and that Dwyer itself has properly taught us everything that we need to know from freshman year to senior year. Students split into teams to simulate the tan sale themselves and got to see which team was closest to the winning bid. The actual financial transaction will end up saving the Palm Beach County School District more than $28 million over the next decade. Make it orange and make it end. That's the campaign aimed at ending bullying. You can support the initiative and make a statement simply by wearing orange on Unity Day. Unity Day is October 25th. That's when everyone is encouraged to come together in schools and communities online to end bullying and to unite for kindness, acceptance, and inclusion. Many schools also take part in Mix It Up at Lunch Day. It's part of a bigger campaign to teach tolerance. And this year it falls on October 31st, so students and employees are asked to move out of their comfort zones and have lunch with someone new. It's all designed to reduce prejudice and biases and cross those social boundaries. One school in particular is great at encouraging new interactions at lunch. In fact, it does it all year long through a program called We Dine Together. Recent studies show a majority of teenagers sometimes feel lonely, even on a big campus, especially on a big campus. But at Boca Raton High School, student leaders have created an organization with a mission to sit down next to students who are eating lunch by themselves. Me and my friends have this club, we dine together. Club member Gene Max Maradu. And we just come and you meet everybody else and you, have, you share lunch with us one of 30 members who walk around campus making a difference. I love m meeting new people. I love relationships. That's like, like what I really love doing. So it's kind of like some, something that brings me joy when I sit down with somebody new. Sometimes the students want to be by themselves, but more often they welcome having a stranger join them in the courtyard. Definitely hesitant at first because they're like, well, why are you like coming up to me and talking to me? Like, I'm not used to this. And then I'm like, yeah, can I just sit with you? Can I eat my lunch with you? And they usually like, yeah, okay, stuff like that. And then I just, I'll start asking them, oh, how was your day? What grade are you in? Where are you from? Stuff like that. Just to spark a conversation. A conversation can then spark a friendship. And then all these new friends meet once a week in this classroom to share pizza and stories and everyone's just interacting, laughing and smiling. And then when lunch is over, everyone's like, oh, we have to go. And like, so everyone really enjoys themselves. We Dine Together was created this past summer through an organization called Propel. People reaching out to provide education and leadership. Greg Francis is Propel's executive director. The character that they're exemplifying, the leadership that they're exemplifying makes a difference. I was hoping that they would affect one student but now they're affecting 60 to 80 students a day, uh, a day in a positive way. And thousands more have been inspired by the story after it appeared on the CBS Evening News. We done. Together. We done. Together. We done. Together. Their mission is to go into the courtyard at lunchtime to make sure no one is starving for company. We Dine Together is a hit, a lunchtime exercise that is feeding the soul. Okay, time now to salute others who are making a difference in the district. In this week's honor roll, seeing green. Staff and students at Frontier Elementary wore green to help raise awareness about DMD, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This is the most common type of muscular dystrophy. DMD is diagnosed in about one in every 3,500 boys. It's much more rare in girls. Several local businesses helped make Polo Park's Career Day a big success. Polo Park Middle School held a Career Day for 7th graders. Career education is part of the 7th grade civics curriculum. Career fairs benefit students by encouraging them to explore career options and to discover what those options encompass academically. And the school board recognized four district elementary schools for receiving the Exceeding Expectations Award for Excellence. This award is a statewide recognition given to top performing Title I schools by the East Coast Technical Assistance Center Title I Consortium. 
The four schools are Boca Elementary, Cross Point, Golden Grove, and Lynbrook. Congratulations to these schools, their principals, and students and staff. We all know that kids will be kids, and sometimes, no matter how careful you are, accidents can happen. But is your child covered if something should happen during the school day? It's a topic we all learn something about in this edition of Parent University. Keeping children safe is certainly a priority at any school, but sometimes accidents happen that are nobody's fault. If your child needs medical attention, health insurance will do its part, but you still may have to come up with money for co-pays, deductibles, and certain items such as crutches. Parents may not know there's a supplemental insurance plan to help. Student accident ins insurance is insurance that will basically help the parent cover costs or expenses that they may incur due to a child getting injured on the property due to no fault of their own. Shannon Armstrong is a Palm Beach County School District insurance specialist. If your little Johnny, Susie, Juan falls and gets hurt and they chip a tooth or they skin a knee and they need to get medical care, this is going to help cover them. The plan is available from School Insurance of Florida and it pays when your child incurs medical expenses for covered accidents. There are two types of low-cost plans. They can purchase something that would cover the student during the school day, or they can purchase something that can cover the student from all day at the school, plus aftercare, as well as into the afternoon and evening hours and weekends. The 24-hour plan costs less than $40 in a one-time payment for school year and summer coverage. The school time plan covers your child during the school day and school sponsored events only, and it costs less than $10 for the whole school year. Plans have no deductible and some exclusions. Examples of the plan's benefits, you'd be paid up to $60 for the first doctor visit and up to $500 if your child needs plastic surgery for a covered accident. You might have a high deductible, you might have a high copay. This is going to help the parent or the guardian with those fees. These plans don't cover accidents received during high school athletics or accidents during non-school sports. For a full list of exclusions and benefits and more information, go to schoolinsuranceofflorida.com. Getting caught up on all school-related news is as easy as downloading the school district's new app. You can access Edline, see the district's calendar, your school lunch menus, and much, much more. To get started, search for School District of Palm Beach County in either the iTunes App Store or in Google Play. Also worth noting that you'll also see translations in Spanish and Haitian Creole. It's going to be really popular. Great work by all, everybody in IT. That's wonderful. And it's free. Straight ahead on Spotlight on Education, a local student on national TV, why she made an appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Welcome back to Spotlight. So many of our students put in very long days trying to balance school and outside activities. I don't know if anyone puts in more work than Bach Middle School of the Arts sixth grader Victoria Karatsis. Victoria's day starts at 5 a.m. when her alarm goes off so she can get to the skating rink at 5.30 a.m. for an hour lesson on the ice. Get this, she practices her figure skating seven days a week. It's paid off with a first place finish this summer at the State Games of America in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Victoria is also looking forward to competing in the coming months in Pennsylvania and Massachusetts. She loves competing and entertaining audiences with her dancing. I love just letting it out there 
and it makes me like when I have tough days just like let the stress all out. After her early morning sessions, Victoria goes to school at Bach Middle School. Then after school, she practices dance for four more hours. Great job, Victoria. She's got to be exhausted. That is a lot of dedication. Madison Moman has to go to bed early to get ready for school at Timber Trace Elementary School in Palm Beach Gardens. That didn't stop her from appearing on late night TV. The fifth grader appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Madison had some fun with Jimmy and PGA golfers Jordan Spieth and Justin Day. Now, Madison is also a champion golfer in her age group. The rising star competes in tournaments across the country, and she looked pretty good on national TV. As, uh, we, you, you guys won. So we're going to give you guys uh, some Tonight Show hoodies we have right here. Some sweatshirts. A couple sweatshirts. Thank you. There you go. Madison hopes to one day be a pro golfer. Right now, she enjoys spending time with her friends over at Timber Trace Elementary. Congratulations. I, it's crazy. I am constantly amazed by how many talented kids we have <laughs> in the school district. It is great. Hispanic Heritage Month is underway. We asked one district employee how she marks the occasion. Oh, it means food and music and dancing and I remember from being a child uh, in New York, we were taught conversational Spanish. There were Spanish people in my neighborhood. And so I'm able to understand some phrases and, and a lot is like um, Southern soul food. And we get to do a mix of, of beans and rices and, and different herbs and, and vegetables. So I love it for all of those reasons. Visit the district's app or website to learn more about how Hispanic Heritage Month is being celebrated district-wide. Good ideas are often the result of a really good foundation. For instance, like an elementary school with its own planetarium, just ahead we'll take you to the special place where kids can reach for the stars. When our kids don't go to school every day, they get further and further behind. From preschool to high school, every day counts. They need to go to grow every day, all day. Attendance matters. Welcome back to Spotlight. Imagination, you could say it's what fuels creativity and new ideas. So it's no wonder it's emphasized at a local elementary school that's known for cultivating young learners. Time to tour Point Siena Elementary. Welcome to Point Siena Elementary STEM Magnet School, home of the pandas. We are a K-5, 100% choice school located in Boynton Beach, Florida. Students from all over the district can apply to the Point Siena Choice Lottery each year to experience STEM education. What is STEM education? STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Our STEM subjects are integrated into all areas of the curriculum, including reading, writing, social studies, art, and music. Our STEM-focused school incorporates project-based learning, where students ask questions, create solutions to real-world problems, and try out new ideas by building, researching, and using trial and error to master the skills traditionally taught in elementary school. We hope to open the eyes of young boys and girls to the sciences and help them imagine and learn about all the different careers that can come from a continued focus in STEM. Point Siena STEM students have multiple opportunities to demonstrate hands-on learning through our four unique STEM labs. The Science Lab. The Science Lab has a variety of equipment uncommon to elementary schools, including computer-based probeware, digital nano microscopes, and a courtyard native plant area, which is an extension of the lab. Math Lab. The Math Lab contains a huge variety of math manipulatives to help students understand basic number theory and problem solving at high levels. Technology and Robotics Lab. Point Siena's Technology and Robotics Lab contains several types of LEGO robotic systems which allow students to design, build, and program their own robotics and other machines. The Planetarium The Planetarium classroom contains a 30-foot dome and full planetarium projector, as well as laptops and iPads which are used by students to simulate and record what they find in the night sky. Our media center houses our newly created makerspace, where students plan, design, and build creative solutions to problems using CAD software, 3D printers, and a laser cutter. Point Siena hosts a variety of off-campus field experiences which are connected to state standards, including airboat trips to the Everglades, snorkel and lab trips to the Florida Keys, and trips to various local natural areas, zoos, and museums in South Florida. These experiences help students connect what they have learned in Point Siena's classrooms and labs to the real world. 
Point Siena STEM focus continues after school as well. Students participate in a variety of highly competitive clubs such as Math Team, SECME, First Lego League, Science Olympiad, and more. Our clubs have been state and nationally recognized in competitions for the last 10 years. Point Siena staff is passionate, knowledgeable, and experienced. More than half of the teachers on staff have advanced degrees, and many have been teaching at Point Siena for more than 15 years. Come be a part of the Point Siena family. The School District of Palm Beach County, your best choice. Okay, time now to check out this week's community calendar. The School District of Palm Beach County invites you to the 2017 Showcase of Schools. Learn more about which program is right for your child. The event will feature choice and career academy programs available throughout the School District of Palm Beach County. Representatives from the schools will be available to discuss the educational opportunities offered by the district. The Showcase of Schools takes place at the Expo Center at the South Florida Fairgrounds on October 17th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Learn more or at palmbeachschools.org slash choice programs. The Education Foundation invites you to the fourth annual Heroes for Education 5K Run and Walk. Join us Saturday, November 4th at Bryant Park in Lake Worth. Register at educationfoundation.org. Do you have news you'd like to share? Just send it to us at goodnews at palmbeachschools.org. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of Spotlight on Education, brought to you by the Education Network. Keeping you informed.